NASA just approved SpaceX's most radical moon plan yet, and it changes everything. Starship HLS won't return to Earth. Instead, it becomes the habitat itself. While China's lunar lander carries 26 tons for a week-long stay, each starship delivers 100 tons with 1,000 cubic meters of pressurized space for up to 100 people. SpaceX is already building a massive test tower at McGregor to simulate lunar gravity landings. But here's the critical challenge. Landing a 50-meter-tall rocket on unstable lunar regolith without tipping over. Let's dive right in. So why is SpaceX building a test tower at McGregor right now? Because landing on the moon isn't the hard part. It's making sure a 50-meter rocket doesn't become a disaster when it touches down. Here's what Elon Musk admitted. Building a fully reusable orbital rocket is one of the hardest engineering problems ever solved. Going to the moon? That's actually easier. And this changes everything for Artemis III. Starship HLS doesn't need heat shields or flaps. It's expendable. One successful landing is all it needs. But that landing must be perfect because two astronauts' lives depend on it in 2027. SpaceX already masters rocket landings. Falcon 9 uses four carbon fiber and aluminum honeycomb legs deploying via pneumatic actuators powered by high-pressure helium. The legs telescope out, lock into place, and touchdown happens. Simple, proven, reliable. But those legs were designed for Earth, and they can't fold back without ground crews and cranes. Starship HLS needs six legs instead of four, not just for weight, but redundancy. If one fails, the mission continues. Same philosophy as Super Heavy's 33 Raptor engines. Individual components can fail, but never the mission. The pneumatic system from Falcon 9 won't work at Starship's scale. High-pressure helium actuators aren't practical for something this massive. The solution? Electromechanical systems using electric motors inspired by Tesla technology. Clean, reliable, precise. No consumable gas is required. Before touchdown, legs extend automatically. Multi-jointed actuators push them outward, creating a wide, stable base for uneven terrain. Once deployed, they lock firmly to absorb landing forces. Unlike Falcon 9, these legs retract themselves using the same actuators in reverse essential for missions where no ground crew exists. Even perfect landing legs face lunar regolith, soft, unstable, and dangerous. Apollo astronauts reported it stuck to everything and irritated eyes, throats, and lungs. If Starship's six legs sink too deep or landing burn calculations are off by even small margins, the entire vehicle could destabilize. At nine meters wide and 50 meters tall, the height to base ratio makes tipping a constant threat. Lunar gravity is only one-sixth of Earth's 1.62 meters per second squared versus 9.8 meters per second squared, meaning less friction and stability. Finding perfectly flat surface? Nearly impossible. SpaceX's McGregor test tower will simulate these conditions using cable systems replicating lunar gravity. Engineers can test leg deployment, engine shutdown timing, and guidance systems before the first prototype leaves Earth. If construction is progressing now, the first HLS prototype could appear by year's end. At the end of 2024, China announced the International Lunar Research Station with Russia. Sounds impressive until you examine the numbers. China's lander delivers only 26 tons and supports astronauts for maybe a week. Russia lacks a lunar lander entirely. Neither nation has rockets capable of hauling hundreds of tons to the moon. SpaceX's Moonbase Alpha uses entire Starship fleets. Each HLS variant provides 1,000 cubic meters of pressurized volume, enough for 100 people. Cargo Starships deliver 100 tons per landing. The comparison isn't even close. Between 2030 to 2035, once orbital refueling is operational, construction begins. First, an uncrewed cargo Starship scouts the landing site and tests terrain stability. Then HLS touches down, followed by cargo ships spaced at least 60 meters apart. Why the spacing? Because SpaceX will tip them horizontally. Could Starship land horizontally? The physics seem possible. Under lunar gravity, a fully loaded HLS weighs 200 to 300 tons, creating roughly 324 kilonewtons 
of downward force. A horizontal hull could distribute this load evenly. But reality kills the concept. Starship's six Raptor engines point downward. Once tilted horizontal, they're useless for controlled descent. That responsibility falls to RCS thrusters, producing only 0.5 to 2 kilonewtons each. With 10 to 20 thrusters, total thrust barely reaches 40 kilonewtons. Nowhere near the 324 kilonewtons needed. Horizontal landing would require 400 to 500 kilonewtons from auxiliary thrusters alone. SpaceX would need thrusters delivering 20 kilonewtons each, or multiply thruster count to 30 to 40 units with bigger propellant tanks and higher chamber pressures. This isn't modification, it's complete system redesign. For Artemis III, SpaceX uses the straightforward approach, vertical landing with main engines, then tipping afterward using inflatable airbags. Deploy and inflate airbags, retract landing legs, let the vehicle settle horizontally. No unnecessary risk. The HLS carrying astronauts stays upright. That's their ride home. Once horizontal, transformation begins. Starship's cylindrical shape makes it perfect for modular construction, but most internal volume is propellant tanks. Engineers drain leftover fuel, then cut tank sections to rebuild the interior from transport vehicle into permanent residence. A lunar home needs floors and walls dividing rooms, wiring for power, ventilation for air circulation, communications equipment, lighting, thermal control managing temperature extremes, plumbing with water tanks, bathrooms, showers, and furniture. The design uses open plan layout with a single deck stretching front to back, occupying one third of the rocket's circumference. Storage and equipment go beneath floors. Overhead clearance prevents cramped feeling. Length divides into zones. Living quarters with modular sleeping pods controlling lighting and maintaining circadian rhythms despite unusual lunar day-night cycles. Shared dining and social spaces support morale, including kitchen, food prep, and earth communication hub. Dedicated science labs handle lunar rock analysis, biological experiments like plant growth, and technical work-sustaining operations. Exercise equipment counters low-gravity muscle weakening and bone loss. Workstations include robotic control hubs, operating construction and repair equipment remotely. At the lunar south pole, temperatures swing wildly. Inside permanently shadowed regions like Shackleton Crater, temperatures drop to minus 230 degrees Celsius. Yet meters away on sunlit peaks like Malapur Massif, temperatures hit 100 degrees Celsius during lunar day. Engineers will use local regolith as insulation, 3D printing it into 50 to 100 centimeter thick walls and roofs around horizontal Starship modules. This natural shield smooths temperature swings, but climate control systems remain critical. If cooling or heating fails, it's instantly life-threatening. EVA suits provide additional protection, not just temperature regulation, but also defense against lunar dust. These sharp, clingy particles require anti-dust coatings on suits, and astronauts pass through dust removal chambers before re-entering habitats using air blasts, sound waves, or electromagnetic fields. Water and oxygen are survival priorities. Resupply from Earth costs roughly $1 million per ton, even with Starship, making local extraction essential. The lunar South Pole contains frozen water ice. NASA's 2009 L-Cross mission confirmed this. Process, scoop icy regolith, heated in thermal extraction units to 100 degrees Celsius, turn it to vapor, then condense back to liquid water. Oxygen is abundant. Lunar soil is 40 to 45% oxygen by mass. Heated in molten salts like calcium chloride at 900 degrees Celsius, and oxygen gas separates from metal oxides. That oxygen goes into storage tanks for breathing. Leftover metals, iron and titanium, can be recycled into building materials using 3D printers. NASA tested this in 2023. One ton of lunar dirt produces 10 to 20 kilograms of oxygen, enough to keep one astronaut alive nearly two weeks. Food starts with prepackaged meals, dried meat, cereals, soups, high energy bars proven on ISS. They last two to three years without spoiling. Fresh greens require lunar greenhouse using hydroponics. Plants growing in nutrient-rich water solutions. Red and blue LED lights at photosynthesis optimal wavelengths keep plants growing. 
while automatic controls mimic day-night cycles. Best candidate? Lettuce grows in 30 to 40 days, requires minimal water, provides vitamins A, C, and K, already successfully grown on ISS. Spinach and radishes are strong contenders too. This isn't speculation. The timeline is aggressive but achievable. First HLS prototype could debut by year's end, right on schedule for Artemis 3 in 2027. That's when two NASA astronauts ride HLS down in the first fully automated human moon landing of this century. One elevator ride later, they're standing on lunar regolith, first footprints in over 50 years, but they won't be the last. Between 2030 to 2035, Moonbase Alpha construction begins in earnest once orbital refueling proves operational. This is exactly why SpaceX is ahead. While China struggles with 26-ton landers, Musk is building lunar cities using the rockets themselves. That McGregor test tower isn't just for Artemis 3, it's the foundation for Mars and beyond. What this means? The space race just changed. By 2027, astronauts return to the moon. By 2035, Moon Base Alpha could house 100 people permanently. The bottleneck was never technology, it was vision. Once orbital refueling proves operational and starships land reliably, the solar system opens up. NASA's watching, China's scrambling. The next decade determines who leads humanity's future in space. My question, when Moon Base Alpha becomes reality, should space exploration be competitive or cooperative? Drop your thoughts below. If this breakdown added value, smash that like button. Subscribe to Space Hub for deep dives into breakthroughs that matter. Turn on notifications so you catch what's next. This is Space Hub. The moon isn't the destination, it's where we build the future.